Hi there, I'm Don, I'm the Sunday Woodcarver. Uh, typically on this channel you see me doing carving projects. Today I'm going to talk about CA glue, which is something that I use as part of my carving projects. I'll demonstrate a few different ways. I'm also a wood turner and I use CA glue uh, in that process. And I have some other little projects and repairs and a few other ways that I use it. So uh, let's talk about some of the ways that I personally incorporate this. I like Starbond. Um, I've been using it for a while and I find it to be a great product and the company supports it well and answers all your questions on their website. So really first class. Starbond has been nice enough to send me a set that I can use to uh, demonstrate in different ways. And uh, so let's get started. Uh, we have some black, medium. We have thin, medium, and thick. Uh, we also have some accelerator. Each bottle comes with an extra tip because sometimes they get clogged up, so that's very handy. And also, they give you a variety of these little tiny ones, so if you have to get into a very tight spot, uh, this is a little thin nozzle and an extra cap to close those off. So let's get started and I'll show you some of the ways that I use Starbond. So here's my first little use or tip. I have a screwdriver that's got a wooden handle and a metal ferrule and the ferrule's loose because the wood has shrunk a little bit. So there's a couple things I could do. I could probably sand this and put some uh, soak it in water so it swells up a little bit and that might hold it better. But CA glue works great for this. So for this little repair I'm going to use the medium. And all you got to do is just spread a little bit on there. And that's it. That's going to stay. Uh, since it's metal on wood I probably wouldn't use regular carpenter's glue, so that's why I'm using the CA glue. And it's a fast repair, in 10 minutes or so that will not come off. Here's another use. Um, on this pine carving, sometimes it easily splits, and this little piece broke off right here. And I want to glue that back so I have enough there to make the thumb. So I'm going to use medium, and just tiny bit in there. Now I could hold that in place or I can speed it up with just a little bit of this accelerator. And once I do that I want a, like a piece of metal or something that can, I can press against it. I'm not going to use my finger here because I'll stick to the carving and I don't want that. So with the accelerator now that that's on there. That's not going anywhere. And now I can go ahead and continue to carve that. I'll have a little crack showing, but that's okay. So here's a, a finished carving that I did of a Santa. And I'd like to have the eyes just a little glassier, so it's a little more realistic. So I'm going to try using some thick. CA glue dries very glossy. So I'm just going to put a little bit on. And you can see how that's shiny and reflecting. It'll kind of follow the contour of the eye. I'm not going to use Accelerate on this. If I use the Accelerator, it'll have a reaction. It'll bubble up and it won't be shiny. So you got to just let that dry. And I'm just going to do it on the eyes. I'm not going to do it on any other part of the face or anything. So that's a little trick that gives you a nice little shiny eye with the reflections. And you see that I've actually painted little white dots to sh sort of give the impression of that. You don't have to do those. Just paint the eye without any reflection. And then this glossy CA will give you those. That look very realistic when you turn it. So here I have a gnome that's, that's finished. And I've decided I wanted to try putting it on a piece of bark. So I have this walnut bark. And I made a flat area for the gnome but it's not completely covering it. So I need to fill some gaps. So in that, this application, I want to use the, the thick. I'm going to put a good amount on there. 
And since I want it to stay put right away, I'm gonna put a little accelerator on and then just press it down for a few seconds. The accelerator will cause this to harden up very quickly. Maybe a count to 10 is good. And it's on there. So that's a quick repair that would be, I think a little messy with yellow glue. You could do it, but I like using the uh, accelerator so it's, it's done quickly. So here's another use. Uh, this one is more for wood turners. And I'm turning a bowl that has a live edge, which means it's still, you wanna keep the bark on there. Uh, and this is pretty thin, as you can see. This one is already dried, so it's not going to move. But the bark is going to want to separate from the wood as it dries and shrinks. So one way to hold that in is CA glue. And for this, I would use the thin. And while it's on the lathe, you can just get right to that edge and just get a little bit in. And the thin will use some capillary action to you know, suck into where the crack is and hold it. You have to be a little careful. This one was not a complete success. You can see up here where it's kind of shiny. I don't know if you can see that, but that's where the CA glue dried on the bark. Uh, since CA glue dries glossy, that's not always a good thing. So you have to be very careful. And that would be a good time to use these little tiny nozzles so you can get right to, to where you want it to go and not have it get all over the, the rest of the bowl. Here's a carving I've started. Uh, I've already put some time into it, so I don't want to just give up on it. But it turns out there's a streak going through here that's uh, not the best wood. It's kind of punky. It, it kind of just crumbles a little bit. Uh, and especially here where I have an edge, this is just kind of too soft to even carve. I probably should just start over. But, but I can save it with the thin uh, CA which tends to suck into the wood rather than lay on the top. So I can just treat it. Anytime you have some wood that's kind of needs a little bit of reinforcement because it's crumbling, you can just let it soak right in there and that'll help it. And I'm getting it on my hands, which isn't good. So I'll let that dry. So now that'll be, once that hardens, I'll be able to carve that. It, it won't be a nice soft wood anymore, but it, at least it'll be something that I can carve and I'll be able to save that part of the carving. Here's another carving that I started in soft wood. I'm learning my lesson with this stuff. But around the eye, I'm trying to do this little detail with this eyelid and the eyeball. And it's, it's hard to carve, it's kind of crumbly. So I can use some thin CA Just put it around the eyelids there that are going to crumble and the eyeball. And now I'll be able to carve that and it'll at least have a little bit more integrity. It's going to soak in. Here's a use that I have on a, almost a daily basis is filling some little defects. And if it was a large one, I might use epoxy. Uh, but these little small ones, it's great to use the black. CA glue. So these are some little worm holes and some ambrosia maple. And you can just drop that in, hit it with some accelerator. It might continue to suck in. You could just give it another couple drops. That'll slow it down a little bit. And then you just sand it off and you'll have two little black spots but you won't have a hole. And here's a, a knot in a piece of walnut. This is a little bit of a large repair for this particular application. But what you can do is multiple applications. So I would put a little, fill that, let it run in there. And then once that's hardened, I can come back and add some more until I top that off and fill in the hole. 
the whole knot. And I'll show you the other side. This is how it's going to look when it's finished. This one was filled and sanded. So you can see it's black where the CA glue was, but it's a nice finish there. And now you can go ahead and finish and sand your, your project. This is a set of wooden toaster tongs that I make and I sell at craft fairs. Uh, but it poses a few challenges in terms of clamping. So let's look at how I make this. I start with a template and I have two thin strips and a wedge. So when I glue this together, if you use uh, carpenter's glue, yellow glue, you know, it wants to slide all around this way and the wedge slips. Anything that's a wedge is, is always difficult. So by using CA glue, which is certainly strong enough, and the accelerator to control the slipping around, it works great on this project. So the first thing I want to do is, it's going to look like this when it's cut out, and here's the wedge. And then I'll cut, trim this on the saw later. So I'm going to start with multiple pieces that I can stack up. So now I can glue a whole bunch of these. I can trace out my template, and I want to cut these on the bandsaw all at once, but they're going to move around, so I want to hold them in place. So I could use two-sided tape, which would work fine, or I guess I could use hot glue, but that would cause some problems. But here's a great solution, and this can be used for any kind of tracing of a template or anything where you want to glue two pieces together and then easily disassemble them. So all you do is have a little bit of uh, blue tape, which works perfectly. I'm gonna rip this in half. Oh, that's not gonna work, Never mind. <laughs> that is not gonna work. Okay. Precision is not important here, as you can see. And I just put a few drops on here. And then I'm gonna use the accelerator on the other piece. Hold these together for maybe five or ten seconds. And repeat this between each of the pieces in your stack. So you could stack up quite a few pieces and cut them. I'd maybe do eight at once, and I'd have four sets. Okay, so now that's going to stay together while I cut it out on my bandsaw, or however you want to cut it out. And then it easily pulls apart. You pull off the tape. There's no residue. And there you go. Here's a part of a segmented bowl. So again, gluing these wedges is uh, a challenge because they're wedges and they want to slide around and move and uh, eventually you're going to put a band clamp or rubber bands or something to hold this together. But until you do, it's a little challenging. So I came up with this idea of using yellow glue or Type on 3, whatever you like to use, in combination with some medium CA glue. So what I'm going to do is put a good amount of carpenter's glue around here, but I'm going to leave a little room in the middle and I'm going to put some medium CA glue in here. And really what this is going to do is serve as a clamp. A little accelerator and then I just squeeze these together And it'll take some time for the yellow glue to cure, but it's staying together with the CA glue until I get all of these parts joined up. And then I can put a clamp around the whole thing just to really make sure the joints are tight. Isn't that great? That's a big time saver and, and makes life much easier when you're gluing up 8 or 12 or 16 segments for a bowl. Here's a situation where I have a crack. It's a pretty big one. It goes through this whole piece. And even when I glue it and clamp it, there's still some void space in there. So I want to fill that, make sure there's plenty of glue in there. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get yellow glue down in there unless I break this apart. So I can use two thicknesses of CA. I can use the thin first and put it in the crack. This will use some capillary action, soak down into the crack, 
Then I use the thick and it'll sort of mix with the thin, pull itself down in there. And now I'm able to get some thick where maybe it wouldn't run down on its own. So CA glue has been a very helpful tool for me uh, in all the ways that I work with wood. And I hope some of these tips are helpful for you. Uh, Starbond has been great to supply me with some of their products so that I can demonstrate to you. And if you check the links below, there's a discount on some of their product if you would like to order some for yourself. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Click on the like button, assuming you liked it. And we'll see you soon with another video. Until next time, happy carving. Oh, almost forgot. Store these in the refrigerator. They'll last a lot longer.